but just a refresher if you do. The first thing is that we are all in the fight or flight right now. And most of you have probably heard that term, but it's really our survival mechanism. It's located in the uh, amygdala of our brain. It goes into action when there is danger. So if there is a danger, like somebody walking into your office or your home with a gun, you, you definitely go off on fight or flight and you're actually two different things happen. Your body gets ready for, for either fighting or running. And by that, I mean your body will tense up. You may get headaches, stomach aches. You may break out in a sweat. Your heart may race quickly. Your pupils can dilate. Um, and that's really to just to get your body ready for that uh, running or fighting back. And for all of us, it's in full force right now because we're all on the lookout for the coronavirus. I don't know about you, but just going to the grocery store, I am hyper vigilant. I am looking for anybody that may be touching anything that I have or getting too close to me. I'm wearing my mask, I'm wearing gloves, really trying to be, be protective. And so it is important to, to be on the lookout on the lookout, but not necessarily to be in that fight or flight mode all the time. And, and that's what we're gonna be talking about today. Some, some ideas to, to help relax and get you away from the feelings of danger. Other things, this is a big changing world. You've all had to make several rapid, constantly changing adaptations with all the virtual learning and teaching. Um, we have never been through like something like this before. This is brand new, a new roadmap. Um, and so obviously we're, we're forging through together. We do not know when this will end. We would like to know when this would end, but we don't. And as a result, there's a lot of what, what ifs that may be going through your minds and your student minds. What if this goes on until next year? What if I can't pay my mortgage or my rent? What if, what if? And actually that fuels anxiety. Trying to forecast the future is, um, escalates anxiety. And fear is really in charge. Um, we're on the lookout, we are fearful. Some of our fears may be minor, like this is an inconvenience. It's really hard to learn distance learning all the way up to severe loss of job and income and how am I gonna pay the bills and how am I gonna feed my family? And so as a result, obviously many of us are feeling very, very overwhelmed and anxiety, stress and depression and or depression can occur as a result. So now I wanna turn it over to you. This is your opportunity to share how you're feeling, what you're thinking, how are you personally coping with the isolation of shelter in place? We're gonna start with that question. So as I had said before, if you would please raise your hand if you're willing to contribute to the conversation, that's always a good thing. And if you're not as comfortable raising your hand, giving some thoughts in the chat box would be fabulous. And I'm just gonna start out just to get us going. Patsy, would you be willing to share how are you personally coping with the isolation of shelter in place? Sure. Um... I think having daily exercise is very much helping. I have a, a group of friends and colleagues from um, my graduate school days actually that are exercising together every day on Zoom. And that has just been a real, um, something to look forward to every day, a, a point of like connection and also of course just good health benefits. So that's one thing. And then just kind of having a routine has, um, the first couple of weeks were so nuts, but now it feels like, you know, a, a, something of a routine at least has set in uh, for me at least. Okay, great. We're seeing a couple chats here. Tracy Chase mentions taking walks. Um, Britt Goldstrand saying organizing her day so that at least it mimics a normal work week. <laughs> Good, thank you. We have someone with their hand up. Sue, I'll go ahead and unmute you. Sue, um, go ahead. You'll need to unmute on your end. Yeah, um, I take walks, try to keep things the same. I look for 
positives in the little things, but as it goes longer, it seems like it's harder to do. But working at home, I noticed too, that not only overwhelmed with what needs to be done daily for work, but then I look around my house, I say, gee, I really should be doing, fixing that, or boy, we haven't gotten to that yet. So I think working at home gets to be a little bit more like, not only do I have to get my work done, but then I look around the house where before when we could go to work, I wouldn't have to look at, gee, I should be doing this at home and working. <laughs> you know, it's kind of that twofold there too. Great, thank you. We have a, a number of things in the chat here, um, but I'm gonna go to someone who has uh, their hand up. Marin, go ahead. Marin Jorgensen. Hi. Hi. Um, I don't know why, but I'm hearing a reverb on my computer. Oh my goodness. I am going to mute you and, and give you a moment to maybe see what's going on. You might have two microphones going. I'm going to try it one more time and then we'll take a few chats before we try again. Mirren, sorry. <laughs> Let's try once more. Go ahead. Go ahead and unmute. Let's try once more. Okay. 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 okay, okay. Mm. No, I'm sorry. It's still just crazy echo. All right. I'm going to let you see if you can troubleshoot on your end while I take a couple of things in the chat box here. There's been a lot of wonderful suggestions. I hope people are able to expand that chat box. If you're not sure how to do that, you can actually drag the chat box out of your dashboard and expand it, um, which allows you to see several at a time. So um, one day I'm seeing things like walking and meditation, reading, music, getting the dog outside, um, getting you know work clothes on, getting out of your sweatpants. <laughs> a lot of people going outside, Zoom chats with friends, gardening, crying, um, putting a treadmill desk in, uh, trying to keep interruptions at a minimum. So lots of things uh, um, along that vein. That's great. Thanks for sharing, everyone. Yeah, and Miran, I'm sorry, maybe we can just have you use the chat box to share yours. I'm not sure what's up with your microphone. My apologies. And if anyone else wants to raise their hand, Marn, go ahead. You'll need to unmute on your end. I read something in the newspaper um, recently, and I presented it to my husband, who's not always game for these things, but he was. So every night before we eat, we list three things that we're grateful for. It only takes a few minutes, but it's remarkably uplifting to um, realize what the good things are in your life and then have a record of them. Thank you. What a great idea. I love that, Marn. That's, that's such a great way of coping by um, putting your focus on the positives that are happening around you and the things that you are grateful for can alleviate some of those negative thoughts that we can tend to have in challenging times. Um, yeah, I'm just looking to see if there are any hands up. More of just all, sort of, uh, all sorts of lovely things in the chat box, but I do see that Roz Johnson has a hand up. Go ahead, Roz. Well, I'm used to taking care of other people. And so it's hard for me to be isolated from people that I usually care for. So, um, for example, I can't visit my mother in the nursing home. Um, so I've sort of adopted a 70-year-old friend who has no car and can't leave her house. And other people are bringing her food, but she mentioned that other people, she was afraid <laughs> to ask for, for special things. So I found out that she was almost out of toothpaste and hand lotion, so I'm sending those this week. Um, and last week I found out that she missed cookies and she doesn't have an oven, so I sent her a case of cookies. Um, so that's kind of my new way of caring for others. I started my granddaughter on a book club through Amazon and I picked the books. So she thinks that's wonderful that she's getting books from grandma. Um, so I think we can still find way to care for people. Um, I babysat for someone's dog for two weeks when they had to isolate and 
um, needed to rest and could care for their dog. So there, there are still ways that we can care for others, even in isolation. Thank you. There have been some similar comments in the chat about giving back, volunteering, finding ways to contribute. Um, I kind of want to be your friend and get a case of cookies. That sounds amazing. So thank yeah, you for the work too. you're doing for your neighbors. <laughs> so similar types of things in the in the chat box, of course, continue to share. Um, but I don't see any other hands up at the moment, Wendy. Okay. Well, thank you, everybody, for sharing. I love what you um, mentioned, Roz. I think that sometimes when you're feeling somewhat helpless, like we can be feeling during this strange time that we're going through, reaching out and helping somebody else in need can make you feel like you're actually contributing to solving the problem rather than just watching it happen. So I love what you're doing and how you're being creative. I'm, I'm hearing a lot of really, lots of creativity, ways of staying in touch with people, and that's so, so important right now. So thank you all for sharing. I'm gonna move on to the, to the next question. How have you and your students been managing the stress of distance learning? And are you noticing any men mental health challenges for yourself or for your students? And once again, please raise your hands if you're willing to contribute or I'm putting some comments in the chat box. And I'll just keep an eye on the um, list to see if anyone has their hand up. I'm not seeing anyone yet, but of course, in these distance times, it's nice to hear your voices, friends. So go ahead and um, be brave and volunteer to, to speak up if you would. Such a and good question. Yeah. Also, this is, you know, this is a time and an opportunity for you to share with each other the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, venting is so important right now, not holding it in. Um, I loved how positive most of you were with the last question, but I also want you to be honest about any challenges that are going on. And to get things going, I'm just going to randomly choose somebody. You can say pass if you're not willing willing to talk about it. Um, Rachel Johnson, would you be willing to share your thoughts? Rachel, I've unmuted you if you have a mic and can speak up. Go ahead. You're still muted on your end. I'm not sure if you have a microphone. Uh, well, Rachel's working on that. We do have some, um, oh, she says it hasn't been able to work lately, bummer. But there has been a handful of things in the chat box, a core group of um, co-workers who've been extremely uh, helpful for Barb, she says. And then also a student who's afraid, Jill mentions, of um, even going outside. There have been um, challenges with work, of course, um, disruptions with jobs, kids, rent, just a lot of life disruptions, sounds like, from the chat box. Um, Laura Malat mentions telling students it's okay if they can't complete work. Take this time to build family unity. Play games. Read. Mm -hmm. um, training is going to wayside as unemployed students are going into survival mode, someone mentions as well. Uh, Vicki says, I think my students have been absorbed uh, more in their, um, have absorbed themselves more in their studies, or they maybe have more time to do so. I thought they would struggle with the isolation more than they appear to be. So that's interesting. Rob at Literacy Minnesota says the stress of trying to make work and school go on as if everything is normal is stressful. Yeah, and Andy of, um, and Robbinsdale mentions, yes, family needs more than schoolwork at the moment. Barb says being accessible via text for students to just say hello and touch base for no apparent reason, that ability to uh, just connect. And Angie says just grant them grace. I'll just check and see if anyone's hand is up and feel free to to raise your hand, let us know that you're willing to speak up if you have a moment. Um, um, so like I'm going to, can I interrupt for one second, Patsy? I'm just wondering if Rob or Andy might be willing to expand on their comments. I think it would be really helpful. Either, would either of you yeah. be willing to? Andy's unmuted. Go ahead. 
Sure. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I've been talking a lot with the students on just, uh, you know, get yourself through the situation, take care of your family, take care of the things that need to get taken care of, come to school when you've got the time and the ability to really focus. Um, nothing that we're doing in, in any of my classes is more important than having your, your family and your kids and everything well fed, well adjusted, you know, ability to get those things done first. Um, and I do have, uh, students who, uh, have lost their, their jobs who are not working currently. And another, uh, at least one other student who does still have her job, but is working in, uh, in healthcare in a, or, or, you know, working in a, a facility that has had multiple uh, COVID-19 issues, including some deaths. Um, and so then, you know, she's got to deal with, I still have to go to work because I have to be able to pay the bills. But, you know, what if I go to work, I catch this, I bring it home, I give it to my kids. So there's a, a tremendous amount of anxiety around that. Agreed. Thanks for sharing, Andy. That is so true um, for those people that are really out there on the front lines working in the healthcare industry or assisted living facilities. Um, they are really risking their lives literally by being on those front lines. And so I'm glad you're there to support this student and her fears. I was talking about the fears going to be more extreme because she is putting herself at a higher risk. Um, so I'm going to be talking about a few ideas that you can hopefully use yourself or pass on to your students as well as we move forward. Thanks for sharing. Wendy, I'm not seeing any other hands up. Okay. Oh, I just believe. Let's try Murin one more time because I know uh, I think they tried to come in and out again. Go ahead, Hi, Marin. We're in. <laughs> oh, Marin, I'm sorry. It's much better. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Um, I just wanted to say I live with a husband who's emergency responder status, and my children are in those essential jobs. So everybody around me is a risk, <laughs> and it gets to be stressful because they're not checking in every day because they're busy. <laughs> And so I have this time on my hands and I'm learning the distance learning technology, but I think about them and it's kind of a distract. I mean, it, I have things around the house like Sue mentioned to do. So sometimes I find myself drifting to those things because the technology, I need a break because it's a little frustrating. <laughs> so maybe some skills as to um, help with uh, not worrying so much or not thinking so much, you know, some maybe some relaxation exercises might help me, I think. Okay. Well, thank, thank you. you so much for sharing. I'm glad that we didn't get the W there for a while we had surround sound. Um, but thank you for sharing. And I can see how this, um, you know, just as Andy was talking about his student, how you have this in your personal life, Marin, um, where you your husband and your um, children are working out in the community and really putting themselves at risk. And so what do you do to help yourself um, alleviate some of the worry and concerns that you have? And I will be giving a few tips on that that hopefully will be helpful for you. Any more comments or I'm not seeing any other hands up at the moment. Okay. Well, thank you everybody again for sharing. I really do appreciate it. Um, so I I'm now going to transition into some tips. Um, here, hang on a second. Let me make sure I get this. There we go. So I'm gonna I'm gonna be giving you some tips here, and some of these you may be very well aware of, and but I'm hoping that you can gain one or two new ideas that are practical that you can put into action to help yourself and your students. 
So I really love this comic strip at the bottom right corner where the little boy is saying, I can't go to the movie theater or pizza parlor. I miss my classmates and dad saying, well, Anne Frank and her family spent two years in an attic. So one of my first comments about this is try to keep things in perspective. I had a conversation with my 88 year old aunt and she was um, saying to me, you know, in my lifetime, I've been through scarlet fever, the polio epidemic. Um, we went through the depression. We had food rationings. I went through World War II and many of my family members fought in the war, basically kind of giving me the perspective of, hey, you know what, this, this will pass and this is a part of life at times. It does seem overwhelming right now, but we really need to kind of, I want to really encourage you to think big picture here in the in the long term of our history and so forth sometimes can be helpful and to really just think about one day at a time if you can stay as much in the present as you possibly can it can be helpful um, the other thing i want to mention and some of you did when you, when you were um, making some comments and the questions is because you're working from home uh, your work life and home life is really blended and it's it can be very challenging. I've faced it myself, uh, you know, just getting out of my little office into another setting, but separating your work and home life, I think is very important right now because otherwise you can work longer than you planned on. You might be answering phone calls or emails after hours. And I really want to encourage you to set those boundaries. I know initially that probably had to happen while you were trying to um, figure out distance learning and different platforms and reaching students and so forth. But as now I'm hoping a few weeks into this that things have settled down a little bit. So make sure you turn off your computer each day at the same time and, and take care of yourself. And then some of you already mentioned this, I think you're all aware of setting that routine. Having some kind of routine in your life can really reduce the chaos and help you feel like you're accomplishing something. So starting, ending at the same day, time every day, doing something after work that doesn't involve work, all of those kinds of things. And somebody had mentioned, you know, really wanting that method to release tension, like I was saying earlier, how there were in this fear response, the fight or flight, and you may not even notice it. You may notice it more physically than mentally, but it's, it is impacting both physical and mental health. So some suggestions for releasing tension is to learn a simple deep breathing exercise. And the one that I use with my clients is what I call 624. I like it because it's simple, it's easy to remember, and you can do it any, anywhere, anytime, no matter if people are around or not. So what it is, is you, you breathe in for a count of six seconds, you hold for two seconds, and you breathe out for four. And you do that five times. So I want all of you to try this right now. Take a minute, breathe in for six, one, two, three, four, five, six, hold for two, one, two, out for four, one, two, three, four. So it's six, two, four to clarify, Annie. Just six seconds in, two, hold, four, out. And you do this at least five times. You'll be amazed. I use this all the time myself. It helps me go to sleep a lot of times. So that's one idea for you to try. Another one is there are very, uh, several free cell phone applications that can reduce stress and anxiety. One is called Anxiety Helper, but I'm going to be showing you on our um, website. I have a, a list of several different apps if you don't like this one in particular. But some of um, these applications have actually have visual um, symbols of breathing, deep breathing. So if you're more of a visual learner, you may like the cell phone apps, but they also have a lot of tips on there. Um, I would really encourage you to at least put one of those on your phone and you can tell your students about it too. And then you're pro you probably are aware of meditation and yoga. A lot of them are online right now. Some of them are pretty short. 
You could do them in the morning and at the end of the day, anything to help you again, release that tension. So this is something that I really emphasize a lot in my uh, mental health private practice. And um, whenever I do workshops, you've probably heard me talk about this if you've come to my workshops, but I like this um, graphic here, which is at thecounselingteacher.com if you want to access it to show your students. And there's other ideas on there as well. Um, but when you put too much energy into those things that you cannot control, it actually ratchets up anxiety. So um, one of you had mentioned, you know, I, I need to stop worrying about my husband and my children because they're in harm's way. Well, you can't control where they go or what they do. Then, so you're putting energy into something that's completely out of your control as opposed to putting your energy into what you can control, which is to focus on what you can do. Like uh, the one gal who said, I'm helping somebody, an elderly woman, I'm, um, I'm gardening, I'm getting out of the house. So you're, you're, you're paying attention to your social distancing, you're finding fun, creative things to do at home, limiting the amount of news that you watch, because that is what's on the news 24 seven, as you know. So please limit that and find reliable sources. Um, but this is just an example of um, really pertaining to our situation right now, but you can use it for anything. So for like, for instance, if um, you're having trouble reaching one of your students, I'm gonna give that example. Um, I would like you each to write down what you can control in that situation and what you cannot control, or you can choose another situation. I'm just going to take a minute for you to do that. What can you control and what can you not control if you're trying to reach a student and you cannot reach them? And anyone that would like to share that in the chat box, I would appreciate it. Wendy, Andy says control how he can control how often he attempts to contact a student, but not how they respond or don't respond, for example. Okay, that's perfect, Andy. Andy, so again, you know, if you're getting frustrated, and how many times do I contact them? Well, you can choose how many times you're going to be contacting that student, how much effort you're going to. So put a limit on it. Uh, it's up to them to come back to you. They have the information. Yeah, and Marin reiterated that as well to limit perhaps the number of efforts. And um, Britt says, I can reach out to them and let them know I'm available, but I cannot control if they choose to reach back out. So similar to Andy's thought. Okay, that's great. So I want to encourage you to use, focus on what you can control. And it's a, you can easily do this at home by just, sometimes it just helps you problem solve and release some of that anxiety if there's a certain situation that is bothering you um, to separate what you can and cannot control, writing it down, I, I really believe in the power of the word. So I would encourage you to use this simple tool. The next one I wanna mention is, I think is so important right now that we express how we're feeling. And sometimes that can be hard to do. We wanna be positive all the time but there's some negative thinking that goes around too. And what can happen is that if, if you tend to bottle up your feelings, it can turn into a depression and anxiety as well because you're internalizing it. So it's very healthy to express how you feel, whether you express that to somebody you trust or whether you write it down by journaling so I wanna do a little exercise here. This is a feeling wheel that I have on the screen just to give you some words to help trigger some thoughts. And I'm gonna use an example of, um, I'm gonna start. And then I, wanna, I want you all to write down, I feel, fill in the blank, 
and then why. So I will start. I feel apprehensive when I go to the grocery store because I'm afraid I will get the virus or I will bring it home to my husband. Please raise your hand if you'd like to disclose how you're feeling, if you're comfortable disclosing, or send it in the chat box. So, Wendy, I'm not seeing any hands up, but there's a couple, couple chats um, more related to the previous idea of how often to contact students. But I can chime in about this wheel. Um, so this is Patsy, and I feel worried when my brother goes to work. My brother's an ICU nurse and is in contact with um, COVID patients daily. Um, so because I worry he may contract the virus and give it to my, to my nieces as well. Thanks, Patsy. Is there anyone else who'd like to chime in? Feel free to raise your hand. We'd love to hear from you. Laura Malat, go ahead. I was just looking at one of the negatives because that's how I feel yesterday is, or this actually this week. Um, I feel irritated when other family members and friends don't respect that we are trying to social distance and they are just acting and coming over whenever they want and don't respect our time. Mm -hmm. um, but the positive side is I feel energized when students do reach out and um, say that they're trying to do, you know, things with their family. I'm, I'm, I'm not expecting them to do a lot of work, but I want them at least to reach out. So I feel encouraged that way. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. We have a couple yes. other hands up, Wendy. Um, I'll just go ahead if that's okay. Sure thing. Uh, Roz, go ahead. Don't forget to unmute on your end. I um, I some days I feel extremely worried because my son is in Iraq um, with the National Guard right now. But I try to um, I try to be positive and let's see optimistic and uh, trusting because I know that they have my son's best interest at heart um, as a group. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Um, we have another hand up, uh, Marin. Thank you. I have a question, or actually, I'll express my feelings, and then I was hoping you could give me advice. Um, using the wheel, I feel frustrated when my husband comes home from work and he doesn't wash his hands right away. And I feel like I'm having to scold him. And it's such a simple act, but I can't control his hand washing. But if he would just do that when he gets home right away, it would alleviate a lot of stress on me. What pointers can you give me to make it clear to him, please? Respect my worry and just wash your hands. And can you please do it for 20 seconds? Mm, thank you. Yeah, thanks, Marin. That's a really great example. And I can feel your frustration. I would feel it's the same way. I, I actually have a husband I have to remind to. Um, so one suggestion I would have for on the feeling, this feeling slide is scolding him that's obviously it isn't working for you um, think about using i feel words so it's not about him it's how it's making you feel by saying you know i feel scared i feel worried about my own health and your health when you don't wash your hands when you come home is one thought that i have um, you could also post a sign, you know, focusing again on what you can control here. Post a sign, the first thing he sees when he comes in the door. Maybe he's not remembering, maybe he's not doing it. 
to upset you, but first off, letting him know how you feel and then posting a sign. And at that, I would leave it alone. There's not much else you can do other than avoiding him until he washes his hands. It's been a couple of great chats. I'll just mention, um, Rob mentions, I feel guilty because I don't know what a successful day of work looks like. Barb says, I feel overwhelmed by all the new technology that I'm not used to. Um, someone says, I feel apprehensive about what a return to normal will look like when it doesn't feel like we'll have normal again. Um, great. Yeah, well, let's look for some more hands up in the chat box here if anyone would like to, to say more. I like what Laura says here. It's okay not to feel okay. I think that's very well said. Um, I, I, you know, some of these feelings, thank you for expressing your feelings, everyone. It's so important and sometimes it can be hard. I think we're technically, especially as helpers, we don't always allow ourselves or gives, give ourselves permission to use feeling words when all of your feelings are valid. No one ever can discount your feelings. They are yours. So having feelings and being able to express them is healthier than internalizing, like I said. But some of you that are feeling some guilt and feeling some frustration in your work, you're doing the best you can. I'm sure you've heard that. But being kind and patient with yourself is also a piece of this. This is brand new. We have never been down this road before. We don't, we don't have the skills necessarily. We're learning as we go. And, and many of you are doing such a good job, but you can only do the, the best you can do. In the chat, just a kind of a theme of not feeling like perhaps doing enough or doing it well enough. And, um, you know, in relation to what you were saying about this is everybody's first time in a pandemic. So, um, but in general, the, the feeling it, it seems from many of the chats is that uh, I don't feel like I'm teaching well enough. I don't feel like I'm connecting well enough, not feel like I'm working hard enough. Uh, that kind of theme is coming through. I've heard that from other teachers as well. So you are not alone. Um, another thing to, to keep in mind is you don't, you may not know um, what your students are going through behind the scenes if they aren't reaching back or you're not getting big classroom sizes. They may have their own struggles and fears going on behind the scenes and therefore don't have or are not putting education at the top of the list. They may just be on survival mode right now. And then a comment around working so hard and then not feeling like they've gotten done what they wanted to do or as effectively as they wanted to. So um, kind of a feeling of insufficiency is a theme I'm seeing. That is a big. And Vicki writes, I think we need to, to space ourselves as available to help rather than our sole purpose is to actively fix. I like that one, Vicki. Mm -hmm. So no other hands up. When okay, but we are seeing, uh, you know, some common feelings here amongst many of you. Uh, I hope that does make you feel somewhat better knowing you are not alone, but I can understand some frustration and spinning of wheels and spending a lot of time and not feeling like you're actually accomp accomplishing something. Um, again, I just want to reiterate, that you are doing the best you can based on the knowledge that you have right now today. And I'm just impressed that everyone took the time out of their already busy, stressful days to join us for this. I think says a lot about the dedication of uh, the field and to those who, who made time to come today. It's, um, it's important and you made it important and you made it happen today despite all the other things going on. So I just, um, I'm just impressed, I guess. I am impressed too, thanks Pat. Okay, let's move forward, but this is, this is important. You feel free to use this wheel. There's a lot of feeling wheels out there. 
encouraging your, your students to talk about feelings, being able to share this in any way that you can is much healthier than bottling it up. So thank you all for sharing your feelings today. Let's move forward here. I'm gonna give you a few more tips. Again, you may be aware of these things, but just like I talked about, talking about your feelings, encouraging your students to talk about it too. Um, this was something Marin had, had talked about with her husband, but checking in with your students, asking them to share two positives every day after you share your own so we can put focus on the, the good that is happening. And then building that community, obviously encouraging students to connect with each other if they're connecting with you. And obviously not all of them are, but that's, you can only work with the students that have the time to work with you. And I really, really wanna emphasize self-care, self-care, self-care. I don't know if you hear this enough, but if, because you're in that helping profession, you're get, feeling a lot of frustration and spinning of wheels it's really really important for you to take care of yourself right now you're juggling a lot you're going down this new path and our new normal please be kind to yourself make sure to connect with your family and friends and co-workers regularly because that community support is essential right now that's why i love this coffee chat platform where we can be connecting um, I know for myself, I have started a family Zoom game night with my adult children um, as a way for us to connect every week so that we can see each other and have some fun and we have a purpose for doing it. But I've had several Zoom meetings with coworkers and friends, little happy hours, seeing each other, interaction is is really fabulous when you get to have it so uh any creativity i know there's facetime there's all kinds of platforms out there that's why technology can can help us with connection so wrapping all that positive support around you is really really important right now making taking that time to decompress every day is another important thing um, you know, express, you've expressed your feelings. So there is that tension um, out there for a lot of us. So making sure that you consciously, you turn that computer off at the same time every day, and then you do something you enjoy, whether it's going for a walk or taking a drive or um, doing yoga or meditation or a hobby, but something that replenishes your energy. Is, is what I'm going for here, making sure you do that. Looking for the silver linings, a lot of you mentioned them. I think you're pretty, you do a really good job of that, but there are a lot of positive stories of people reaching out and helping others like uh, some of you have shared today. And laugh, humor, it helps release stress and it's really good for the soul. Um, a lot of my friends, we've been passing back funny little um, pictures and stories to, we have to laugh in spite of the challenges that we are under right now. And with that, I'm going to show you a joke. I don't know if any of you have seen this, but this is, this is absolutely going to be my hair. I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready to cut it off right now. <laughs> And then this one, once the salons reopen, is this what it's going to be like when we get our hair cut? <laughs> Might be better if I cut my own. I don't know. <laughs> oh. So laughter. I just want to emphasize the laughter piece. And uh, just to tag on to that, Rob uh, Podlasek, if you know him from Literacy Minnesota, uh, no hair issues, he says over there. So. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this is when bald is very in, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> My daughter did mine, so, you know, I've got that going for me. <laughs> All right, well, are the bangs straight? <laughs> so far. Yeah. All right, just, so just to kind of um, give you a visual of self-care, it comes in, in many different forms. Most of us are very well away, aware of physically how to take care of ourselves. Um, but many of us aren't as familiar with how to take care of ourselves emotionally, 
um, and sometimes socially and spiritually as well. So just giving you a visual there. The one on the, on the social at the bottom that I really want to point out is that asking for help. So I'm going to transition to that right now. So any of you who are really struggling, I want to highly encourage you to reach out to get help from a professional. Uh, most of you know when I'm not at Panda, I work in a private practice as a mental health therapist. Mental health is an essential service. We are open and many of us are doing telemental health, which I had to fast and furiously figure out. So um, I know it works and it works well. Uh, and so you, um, if you have a therapist already, you can contact them to find out if they're using telemental health. Many of them are, most people are. And they are also, some people are being seen in the office using social distancing measures um, and also by phone. We can bill by phone as well. So I really wanna encourage you to reach out whenever you need that support and also to encourage your students too. Um, so I wanna, uh, I'm gonna take you to our website to show you where I have a lot of resources for you. Um, but before I do that, I just want to point out that we just recently, in like the last week, changed our website address to pandamn.org, which is a little easier to remember. So note to self, but it will direct views the old one too. So I'm gonna click into this. Oh, but, oops, hang on. Back. Okay, I wanna show you on our website. So on Panda's website, in the mental health category, under resources, I have put together a number of helpful resources for you that I wanna point out here. And here in the second paragraph where it says click here, I actually have a uh, mental health resources that have gobs of information that you can use for yourself, your family, for your students. First off is a number of free crisis lines. These are 24 seven, they are manned by professionals. Um, so I have a lot of free crisis lines here, some teletherapy um, online where you can go directly to them if you don't um, have a mental health clinic you, you necessarily wanna go through. For um, those of you who may need sliding fee or your students who need sliding free clinics, I have this, this one um, under needy meds. You can search by city, but I've got a few mentioned here as well in the metro area and also some in greater Minnesota. Other mental health resources. Here's where the um, free cell phone apps are. There's a lot of really good ones here that I have highlighted so uh, you could check out any of those, some other helpful websites and some self-help self books if that's more what you'd rather be doing. So you, you're welcome to print this up, share it with your students, um, it's there for you. The other thing on here I wanna mention is I did write an article for the um, PD Connect a couple weeks back and the link to that article is right here. So if you want a few more tips, I've got more within that article that you can find there on our resource page. And then underneath there is a number of Minnesota health related links for yourselves or your students. Um, I've got links to um, handouts in different languages if you wanna share those with your students. Also NAMI, Minnesota, the National Alliance on Mental Illness in Minnesota. They have free classes and support groups online for people who may want to access them. And then other articles related to managing anxiety and stress are also in here if you wanna do a little more reading, but this is all there for you. Wendy, we did have an important comment in the in the chat. I wonder if I can interrupt and, and bring your attention to it. I have a question around self-medicating. Um, 
So the exact course comment was that there is, let me just find it, um, a, not a, a lot of uh, folks who are using what is happening as a reason to self-medicate, and then a couple of responses to that, mentioning um, things like students and perhaps people um, in the community who are using this as a reason to do some pretty unhealthy things, and maybe you have some uh, response to that. I do. I, I think, um, you know, many people when they are feeling stress will use unhealthy coping strategies and that may include overeating, over drinking. Um, I am concerned that there will be more substance abuse issues that come out of the COVID pandemic. I'm also concerned about um, abuse, domestic abuse may be on the rise. Um, in this list here, I'm going to pull this up again, just to kind of point out there, as far as abuse, this Minnesota Day One Crisis Hotline, uh, I want to point that out right here, if you can see that. But also in regard to the substance abuse, if you have concerns of overdoing, you can go to um, this under other mental health resources. Um, SAMHSA, Substance Abuse and Mental Health Administration, has, you can search for treatment facilities if you need to, um, you know, get an assessment. It would be an assessment that you might, that you could seek out to find out, am I overdoing? And um, I would really encourage you to take a break if you are finding that you're overeating, over drinking, take a couple weeks off from alcohol. Um, that's what I usually tell my clients. If you're feeling you're on the edge of uh, drinking too much, take two weeks off. And if you, if, you, if you really struggle to take those two weeks off, then it's time for you to seek out getting an assessment to see if you need more support. Somebody mentioned the spiritual help. A lot of the churches are doing online services, so you may want to check in with your church to find out if that's a possibility. But yes, I, there are a lot of comments I'm seeing here about the liquor stores are remaining open. So yeah. being careful, everything in moderation is obviously the key here. He's, you know, trying to eat healthy, trying to make some healthy meals, maybe not buying all the snacks when you do go to the store to avoid uh, overeating unhealthy food. Mm -hmm. There's a good comment here from Janine wondering if providing a webinar or some other professional development about addressing potential fears and concerns our learners may have as they do return to classrooms. Um, so maybe down the road, that's something Wendy and, and I can think about. What do we do about that? How do we help students cope with coming back to class um, if it's if it's safe to do so. Well, that's a good point um, because uh, I think that maybe we can have some tips available. I am planning to do another one of these coffee chats at the end of May and see where things are at that point. Things have shifted so quickly. I'm glad you're able to, to do another one. I've also chatted out um, in the in the chat box, everyone, a, a couple of direct links to that list that uh, Wendy mentioned, as well as the article that she mentioned for the ABE Connect. Um, and just let me know if you're having any trouble locating any of those things, and I can help you out. Okay, I'm going to turn it over to you, Patsy, here for the last few slides here. So we are we're getting close yeah. to our hour mark. Yeah, thank you so much. Such great information. I did. Um, I don't always record these. I did decide to go ahead and record this one because there's just so much helpful information that's being shared and such great tips. Um, and the slides themselves, often it's the notes that are the most pivotal, but I think here, because you're an expert in this area, um, so many of the slides and your comments are, are things that others may, will definitely want to hear. So I'll be posting that. And then another thing to know is that this um, Distance Education and COVID-19 Schoology group, if you haven't already joined it, please do. Lots of information um, is being shared that way. So I'm not going to dwell here because we've used this slide on every copy break, but if you haven't yet joined it, please do. And then I think there's another slide. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I have <laughs> <Okay>. control. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Um, and, and just another mention, Wendy already mentioned, but 
um, so many news um, letter articles are coming out. Check your inbox on Tuesdays for that. Lots of good things uh, related to the current public health crisis as well as distance learning in particular and, and how we can muddle through and help our students do what needs to be done at the moment for themselves and for their learning. And there is a new resource area on the on the website. As far as upcoming professional development, um, we are here. All of us are working hard to make sure that uh, you are able to stay connected. So hopefully you're able to tune in. We've tried to stagger these at different times of the day, but I know you know we're going to always be on top of somebody's teaching schedule or your kids' uh, Zoom meetings or what have you. But tomorrow with Lindsay for math, and uh, next week Andrea Eckelberger around ESL, English language arts, and Andrea coming up later in May, and then some webinars where we grant CEUs are available. You'll want to catch the ABE COVID update from MDE as well as reading yet this week with Penny, and then coming up later in May are a handful of other topics that um, if they are important for your work currently, please check in, and even if you just miss us, check in, join us. <laughs> We'd love to have you. Um, isolating times, but there are ways to connect. And with that, I want to thank you all for sharing today. Many of you shared some really honest feelings. I so appreciate that. Um, stay healthy, everyone. Stay safe. I hope uh, nobody gets the virus or has had anybody who has had the virus. Remember to be kind and patient with yourselves. So important right now. No guilt. We're all in this together, and we will get through this together. This too shall pass. And just a reminder, I am here for you. If any of you have any concerns, want to talk further, feel free to contact me. The easiest way is through panda at ardell.org. Great, and I would just want to add a thanks to Wendy and her team at Panda for helping us um, host this and to, um, for sharing her expertise. It's just so valuable at the moment to have time to come together and in particular with someone licensed in this area of work. So thank you so much. Um, we'll hang out for a couple of minutes here if people have additional questions or something you wanted to discuss with us outside of the larger group. And uh, we'll hope to see you in another coffee break soon. Thanks everyone. Thank oh, and you, notes, everyone. Yeah, and I want to thank Marn for taking notes, and those will be sent out to everyone who registered. So uh, look for those in the next couple of days. Thank you. Marn, go ahead. Okay, I was not able to unmute myself. So Wendy, um, typically the notes that the note taker writes up uh, are based on like the slides and the speakers. And then Patsy, will you send out the script of the chat? Yeah, so what I thought I'd do, Marn, if you can just share, if you wanna send me and Wendy the notes that you took or a link to them. Um, mm -hmm. And then I will respond with the chat log. Uh, okay. And then Wendy, Wendy, the next step would be for you to just look through the chat log and Marn's notes and, and do some merging so that they're not repetitive. And just if there's a, anything that was in the chat log that we should capture in the notes, I'll just let you do that. Um, and then do you feel comfortable, Wendy, sending out the notes to anyone who registered or would you prefer that, that I do that? Oh, uh, I can do it. Okay, you know how to find that list and go to training. Um, if not, I can, so. I can help you. It's not, yeah, it's in there somewhere. Um, and I do think it's important to send it to anyone who registered, not just if they were able to attend. So you'll wanna click on the registration list. But yeah, okay. so mine, if you wanna share it, that'll prompt me to share the chat log and we'll be off and yeah. running. And it was helpful for me that either you or Gail or Christine or all three of you, I forget, um, well, Gail sent the notes. She also sent the Excel, the spreadsheet of the registrants, which I just copied and pasted, and then the chat log. So okay, all maybe of that was, that. yeah, was really essential to have in one place. I really appreciated that. Okay, yeah, I can grab both those actually. That might save everyone a step. Um, and we certainly don't want to send out the full chat log. There's just, it doesn't make sense. There's a lot of back yeah. sometimes techie stuff or sometimes yeah. private messages that don't need to be shared. So um, yeah, just anything that you want that came up in the chat log that you think needs to be in the notes, we'll just let you merge those. And if there are any live links you wanna to add to the notes, Wendy, just feel free to do that. Okay. Um, 
and yeah, that's that's it. Um, I don't know if the, there are additional people here. I'm going to unmute people in case somebody needed to to speak up. You're welcome to to do that once I figure out how to unmute you. There it is. Okay. So, uh, if there's someone still here who wanted to say something to the Atlas staff or Wendy, feel free. Otherwise, we'll hang out maybe just another minute before we close the meeting. <laughs> 